So coronavirus is a type of virus uh, that affects all animals and the canine coronavirus is specific to dogs. Um, there's two different uh, forms which themselves are quite different. There's a respiratory form and an enteric form which affects the gut and that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, there's obviously a lot of media speculation around the COVID-19 coronavirus in people. That's a respiratory form, completely different to this canine coronavirus that's causing gastro in the greyhound population here and domestic dogs as well in Australia. The World Small Animal Veterinary Association has put out guidance around this and uh, certainly COVID-19 can't be caught uh, by dogs and vice versa, the canine coronavirus. Uh, can't be caught by people. Canine coronavirus in most animals will show quite obvious symptoms of diarrhea and vomiting and lethargy and some inappetence. Those kennels that have been affected, it's been quite obvious that the majority of dogs in the kennels have been affected over a period of a few days. And so it's quite um, a virulent strain. It's spreading quite rapidly through those kennels that are affected. Initially, the coronavirus uh, uh, is transmitted by the fecal oral route, so exposure to feces ingested, it causes, it replicates within the intestines generally and causes the disease. One to four days there's an incubation period that we might not see signs but they're still shedding the virus. From then on the, the clinical signs are, are lasting about one to three days normally but they could last up to ten days, uh, particularly if they get the d other diseases and other opportunistic uh, gut infections, other bacteria, etc. Probably one of the most useful things we can do for these dogs is reduce any extra stress that might predispose them to getting uh, more severe signs and, and allow them to recover uh, what is quite a mild and transient gastro in most of these animals, and let them recover quicker. And so minimising any transport, exercise, etc. will help, particularly in these uh, sick dogs, for a two week period. Once they've recovered, they're still infective. So it's important that these dogs are isolated from the other population of dogs, from healthy dogs, uh, for at least uh, 10 to 14 days after resolution of the signs. In terms of prevention, the most important thing is appropriate hygiene. Um, so in practicing good um, uh, hand hygiene, foot hygiene, uh, minimising the spread on bedding, leads, muzzles, trailers, etc. Anything that the dogs do have contact with, making sure that participants have got very strong biosecurity practices at their own kennel. In terms of introducing new dogs, making sure they're isolated um, from healthy dogs, uh, initially for a period of 10 to 14 days, to make sure that if they do have uh, the disease, or they have had it in the past, that they're not shedding that virus into a healthy population. So there is a vaccination uh, for canine coronavirus in terms of the gut form um, that is available from veterinarians, but you should speak to your veterinarian about advice regarding that vaccination. It is somewhat controversial in that it might not protect against all strains and the World Small Animal Veterinary Association uh, at this stage doesn't recommend vaccinating against coronavirus because there are different strains that cause different types of the disease and the vaccine's not fully protective. However, it may do some uh, good and there's certainly lots of veterinary clinics that would recommend it in a, a population, particularly for young dogs, puppies, which are at most at risk. Uh, essentially coronavirus knocks off um, the top layers of the intestinal villi in, in the gut and that can cause infection and dehydration and predispose to other infections uh, such as parvovirus and so young dogs that aren't fully vaccinated and uh, so we're talking six to eight weeks beyond, they're at risk of uh, developing further signs and, and more serious disease. So speak to your veterinarian regarding advice about vaccination and those younger at-risk dogs uh, may be worth considering vaccination. This vomiting and diarrhea is not uncommon in a, a kennel situation and this year we've had um, the coronavirus in Western Australia and Queensland and it's been quite contagious and affecting lots of kennels but it's not the first time we've had a coronavirus in, in kennels generally. It's not new but we want to make sure participants are taking it seriously and taking the pr appropriate precautions to limit the spread and the impact on the industry. Mm -hmm.